right, section 4.7 in Venema's Foundations of Geometry deals with the Euclidean parallel postulate, but it deals specifically with those things that might as well be the Euclidean parallel postulate. What does that mean, might as well be? Well, it means that they are logically equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. And remember, the Euclidean parallel postulate says if I have a line and a point not on that line, I can draw one line through the given point parallel to the given line. That's, that's my understanding of the Euclidean parallel postulate. That's the way we set it up way long time ago. There are other things, other statements, other theorems that are equivalent to the parallel postulate. By that we mean if you were to assume that statement then the Euclidean parallel postulate would follow and if you were to assume the Euclidean parallel postulate then this particular statement would follow. I will give you an example. It's the standard example. The standard example is the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem is equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. Now, what do I mean by that? The converse to the alternate interior angles theorem is if I have two parallel lines and they are cut by a transversal, those alternate interior angles are congruent. We know from previous work that if the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. But the converse is, is not necessarily true in neutral geometry. You can have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and the alternate interior angles are not necessarily congruent. If you take the converse and say that's true, the alternate interior angles will be congruent, then I argue that that's the same thing as saying take a line, point not on the line, there is exactly one, just one parallel through that point. That's it. So we do this in two ways, well in two parts rather. We have to show that if you assume the red, blue comes true, and if you assume the blue, red comes true. So let's assume the red and see if blue comes true. We're going to assume the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem, which says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so we're going to assume that L is parallel to M, they're cut by some transversal T, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. That is given to be true. So I have to show that the Euclidean parallel postulate follows from that. The Euclidean parallel postulate says if I have a line, call that line L, and a point not on that line, call that the intersection point of M and T, there is exactly one parallel. How do we show exactly one parallel? Well, we take some other line through that point, and we say that M prime is also parallel to L. Could it be? Well, the red theorem says if I have parallel lines and they're cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. But wait a second, if this funny looking blue angle is congruent to this red angle, and this red angle is equal to this red angle, then really this blue angle is the same as this red angle, and since the blue angle is the same as the red angle, and they pass through that same point, and they're on the same half plane, well, protractor postulate says the ray I draw has to be unique, so M prime must be M. There's only one parallel to line L through that point. 
Therefore, alternate interior angles converse to that theorem implies the Euclidean parallel postulate. On the other side, we can assume the Euclidean parallel postulate and go after the other side. So we'll start with some line L. We'll have some transversal T. Now the Euclidean parallel postulate says there is one and only one parallel line. One and only one parallel line. And we get that parallel line by saying alternate interior angles are congruent. We, we construct, it's roughly equivalent to the double perpendicular construction. So what if we were to introduce a second line? This would be line L double prime. And for L double prime, I've got this angle congruent to this angle. You would say, well, hang on a second there. L is parallel to L double prime by the alternate interior angles theorem. The alternate interior angles theorem, the, the front end, the one that we know is true and neutral, says that this angle congruent to that one implies that L is parallel to L double prime. But wait a second, L is parallel to L prime already. And since L is parallel to L prime already, what does that mean? It means that those two lines must be the same line. And so we have the alternate interior angles theorem in its converse. If I have two parallel lines and they get cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles must be congruent. Okay. That's what we mean. We assume the one and prove the other. We assume the other and prove the one. Now, there are lots of theorems, lots of statements, rather, that are equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. Euclid's fifth is, Euclid's fifth postulate is equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate, which seems like it should be obvious, but it's not, because Euclid's fifth says, if I have two lines, and they're cut by a transversal. And the sum of those two measures right there is less than 180, then the lines will eventually meet on that side of the transversal. That's the way Euclid's fifth really reads. That is equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. Um, Proclus's axiom is equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate. If L and L prime are parallel lines and you've got a transversal and it intersects L, then it has to intersect L prime. Wait a second. In a non-Euclidean geometry, it could be that I draw this green transversal. I'll make it a red and I draw this red transversal and it hits that green line, but it doesn't hit that one. Yeah, I don't know either, but that's non-Euclidean geometry. Um, also equivalent to the Euclidean parallel postulate, if L and L prime are parallel lines and T is a transversal such that, I should read ahead, no, if Okay, so let's pretend that I draw a transversal such that the transversal is perpendicular to the one. It must be perpendicular to the other. That is just as good as saying the Euclidean parallel postulate holds. So are these. If I have four lines, L, M, N, and K, such that K 
is parallel to L, M is perpendicular to K, and N is perpendicular to L, then either M is the same line that N is, or they are parallel. If that happens, then it's just as good as giving the Euclidean parallel postulate. Heck, for that matter, if L is parallel to M, and M is parallel to N, then either L is equal to N or they are parallel. That's the same as implying the Euclidean parallel postulate. Heck, this one, if the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees exactly, then that's just as good as saying, given a line and a point not on the line, there is one parallel through the, line, through the point parallel to the line. And then this bizarre one down here. Similar triangles exist. That's just bizarre. But if we think about how similar triangles scale up and scale down, uh, there's a lot of parallelism involved. And so I'm not surprised that in a discussion on parallelism, similar triangles pops up. So if you talk about two triangles being similar, you are automatically in the Euclidean plane. Okay? Okay. Um, you've got to know this stuff because you're going to want to say, you know, talking in a neutral geometry, you're going to want to say, oh, the angles of a triangle at up to 180 degrees. And if you do that, you are automatically saying Euclidean parallel postulate holds true. You are saying that automatically without actually saying it because you're saying something that's equivalent. Now, that won't be a problem in our next lesson because we go into Euclidean geometry for a while, but that will be a problem when we stop talking about Euclidean geometry and start talking about hyperbolic geometry. You're not allowed to say anything on this slide. You're not allowed to say anything. Well, you're, not, you, you're probably not allowed to say anything on this slide either. You're not allowed to say anything on this slide in hyperbolic geometry. None of these things are true in a hyperbolic geometry. Okay? Okay. So that's all for now. I'll see you soon.